all of that to say with what you have going on now, how would you describe Alphabet to, to someone who's, who's not familiar with your stuff? I'd describe it as synth heavy, dark, um, breakbeat slash mid tempo, maybe. I don't, I, as I said, I, I've never really kind of um, listened to that much. As I said, I'm inspired by kind of old school kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really be sure what, there's so many genres now, so that I don't really know where it would fall within them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually quite difficult, you know, like when you go on Spotify and you have to do all your like, you know, pitch your track and all that, what genre is it? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just music, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, the way I'd describe it is if you like, you know, big, dark, heavy drops, and that's what I tend to try and do. Mm -hmm. um, vocal heavy, usually my tracks are quite vocal heavy. I love lyrics. You know, I love having a vocalist. Weirdly, one of the things I learned most from, as a, I'm assuming you've heard of uh, What's So Not, yeah, um, he used to. Yeah, he used to have flume in it and stuff. I used to be really big into them and in, uh, back in the day. Yeah, and uh, I used to watch all. You know, they have a few tutorials online. They do. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I learned was uh, they were sat at a laptop, and each one of them made a different section without the other person knowing what they were making. They just knew the key, and they just went, "Yeah, join them." That that's literally what they did. So it's almost two completely different tracks. I think they were working on Jaguar. Yeah. Which, if you listen to it, it's like super like ethereal at the start. And then it drops and you're like, what? What, what? what the fuck is this? What, where's this even come from? Yeah. And yeah, I was watching it and I was like, that's such a cool approach to do this. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of, I'd say that's what I really like about tracks, to be fair. And you'll find it in quite a few of my tracks where there's not really much lead up into something crazy. It's just like, you know, nice vocals. Yeah, it's kind of electronic, a bit dark. And then it's like, okay, where, where did that come from? And I know I know your music has some of that as well. So I didn't know about that from the uh the classic what's or not. I'm gonna have to go dig up those videos, I think. Yeah, yeah, you learn a lot from stuff like that even like completely different genres it's just it's, it's so compatible everything you learn absolutely i mean and it also helps that they're both extremely talented like had a lot of vision between the two of them for something new just some guy called flume whoever that is you know what I mean? <laughs> inconsequential so like so that's sound wise do you think that in your music you have any kind of like emotion or message that you're trying to convey to your listeners through what you do um i'd say so um i'm a very positive person in general or well, weirdly in my music lots of times it's not negative what i write about but it is that kind of feeling it's it is usually quite dark mm -hmm. and that's mostly because even though i'm a positive person as everyone we've all got good days bad days in my bad days i think you know my way to kind of get through them is I just write ideas down. I'm not great at lyrics, mm -hmm. but I will write like a basic idea for lyrics. Yeah. And um, I don't have many bad days, which is very positive for me. You know, I know I'm quite lucky in that. Yeah. Uh, but then in my good days, I'll be reading the lyrics and I'll be like, God, you you pansy, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> but but they work. They just work perfectly for the music. You know what I mean? It's It's a very dark vibe. Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's kind of i'd say lots of times um lots of my lyrics uh kind of, i do i'd say i'd make two kinds of songs i make the ones with like little like sample snippets kind of stuff like that like my track cruising which has some like american rap on it you know it's not really anything i like cars it talks about cruising it sounds like a drifting song you know it's there's not really much more to it yeah um, but my like longer kind of tracks like free don't know you know one I'm making now with a ghost um they all kind of come from that kind of idea of um you know you do have your darker days and you just when you have your darker days you just have weird lyrics in your head you know like really dark lyrics so um that's kind of what they convey it's not a specific message it's just dark 
you know, um, I want to make you feel bad kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, is it, is it, do you want to make you feel bad? I mean, I find a lot of it is that, well, stop me if you disagree, but I think part of it can be like, if you are going through something difficult or you're having one of the bad days and you listen to something like that art that somebody else made and you kind of feel like, all right, like it's not just me. Like I'm not crazy. This is a, a shared human experience. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. There's uh, obviously an aspect to that where um, you might think you're kind of on your own when you feel that. Mm. And then, yeah, as you said, if you listen to like the lyrics, like, and you know, like don't know or whatever, it's like you'll actually identify with some of the lyrics, which is what happened to me, say with like Linkin Park or whatever. So it's quite good. Mm-hmm. I mean, Linkin Park, probably one of the most, as far as lyrics goes, yeah. <laughs> maybe one of the most cringy bands ever, but I know, but I love it so much. It hits, <laughs> it just hits it's the right spot. So we talked a lot about stuff that got you excited as a child and a little bit about, you know, your, your peers in the, in the scene. Um, is there any other kinds of music that's really getting you like excited right now? I've always kind of tiptoed in metal basically. So I'm um, obviously, I know we mentioned Linkin Park and stuff, but uh, they're not really metal anyways, but uh I kind of, once I started making my own like electronic kind of stuff, I lost track of a lot of other music because mm-hmm. I was just making my stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I always keep on trying to find like metal bands or, you know, like heavy kind of bands. You know, my sister is really massively into like Slipknot, all this kind of heavy kind of stuff, Bring Me the Horizon. Mm-hmm. And uh, weirdly, I've just been listening to them so much lately. Um but then weirdly, after I've listened to like Bring Me the Horizon, I'll be listening to Taylor Swift. So uh, you know, I'm one of those people who's kind of like, I don't really care what the music is, as long as the music is good, you know. Uh, and if it makes me feel good, that's really all I really care about. So yeah, I've listened to all sorts, like any kind of, you know, top 40 kind of stuff, which most people hate. I think that's amazing songwriting. I don't think most people, I mean, it wouldn't be top 40 if that many people hated it. Well, yeah, of course. But, you know, you, you always hear like the producers be like, oh, guys, generic, all this stuff. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but there's such a big team of writers behind that. that. It's actually, it's a really good track. It's just, it's just the formula they're following in it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I, I literally listen to all sorts and I'm always open to suggestions. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, what you said about pop music, like, yes, it's formulaic, but you know, to make that song that that reaches, that connects with that many people in the way that like those top songs do, that's that's it's fascinating. Something to be like studied. I wish I could do that, honestly. Yeah. Uh one other creative question. Uh as a perfectionist, I'm sure you understand this, but like we all face moments of like self-doubt and criticism and uh, this can spiral into, you know, creative block, writer's block and things like that. Um, and if you've dealt with this before, like, what have you found effective to climb out of those holes? So I used to get a lot of creative block. Um, I'd say, obviously, as I said, when I first bought my synths, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm. Um, once I started to learn them, I started to just mess about with them, you know, and it turned into like happy surprises. Since then, I've learned a lot of what they do. You know, um, I've got like a sub 37. I've got quite a few now, you know, I've got like four or five different synths. And if I don't really know, you know, if I do have a bit of a creative block, I'll just get a kick drum, just be going dun, 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 for like hours on end, which I'm sure the neighbors don't like. <laughs> and I'll just, uh, I'll just, mess around with a sound and just wait for that one or two second loop when I'm messing about with it where I think oh wow that sounded good yeah you know and that's usually how I get around it it's um happy surprises most of the time (laughs) yeah and doing it you're not like taking you're not taking a break you're not like I don't know what to do I guess I'll go do something else it's like you you're you sit down and you're like I'm gonna fuck around until something comes out yeah, I'm just like, so I have my day job and I finish my day job. I'll come home. Um, it depends on how the job's been in the day. I'll either play some games to relax and make music or I'll go straight into music. 
And if I've finished the track and I don't really know what to do at this point, I just think to myself, I need to start a track. Mm. And if that means playing a kick drum for two hours and just trying to find that little snippet of something I can work a whole track around. Yeah. then that's what I'm doing. Nice. And uh, you know, I kind of find that is quite useful. And another one, which I found quite weird is um, obviously it's not an Ableton specific thing, but something I do all the time is usually when you like loop a section of a track, you loop it like perfect on the bar. Mm. But I've started doing this thing for the past, well, started for the past year. I've been looping them off the bar and I've found so many things which say you're making everything to the beat and you think to yourself, okay, that sounds good to the beat, but then you move it a bit to the left, like the loop. So it's like the end of one loop and the start of another. Yeah. I found so many like new ideas just from doing that. Interesting. I'm like, oh my God, that actually fits in even better. Like if it was completely reversed. So I do that a lot, all the time. I get so many ideas from that. Fascinating. So like you're taking, um, like you have different ideas that you've done and you're like this one, this one, this one, and then you're moving yeah. through them and seeing how to combine them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's essentially like you have like a say four bar loop. Yeah. And and you know it sounds good, but it could sound better. Mm-hmm. And you don't you're not hundred percent sure what it is. Is it the drums? Is it this? You know, just something isn't clicking. So I'll just I'll go from looping it for four bars, loop at one bar, and just move it around just at uneven times. And you'll just find that and sometimes you'll just find that a sound which before wasn't really the main sound like something like like going upwards or something like that. Um, you listen to it and you're like, God, that could actually be the sound there. But I'm focusing on everything else at the moment. Okay. So um, that's what I did uh, with my track, Lonely Day, where I, I always like having two different drops because you could just have the same drop twice, but it just feels very copy-paste to me. Mm. Um, I always like having a bit of a different vibe to the track where it like transforms. You know, mostly because of that video, it kind of opened my eyes. But um, yeah, that one was just, I was looping it. And I think in that one, I unintentionally moved one of the, uh, whilst I was looping it, I tried to move the loop, but I somehow managed to move one of the bass lines, like one beat. Mm. So it was playing on the offbeat and it just made this insanely amazing sound. And I was like, wait, what, what's just happened? What's that? <laughs> and yeah and then i just realized that and i was like god that sounds amazing and i just kept it all down the second drop so happy accidents yeah exactly no talent all luck <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so you you have like a bunch of synths i'm jealous that sounds cool that sounds cool to have that uh, if you had, I was my, I was going to ask you what's your like desert island plugin, but I'll just broaden it to desert island synth. If you had like, if you had to just pick one thing, everything stock, one other thing that you can bring to make music with, what do you think you'd go for? Uh, I'd say it'd be in between my sub thirty seven and my Moog. Um, I've got a mother thirty two. They both have very different functions. So with um, yeah, so in my sub 37, I've always managed to get like the main leads and like in my tracks, but in my Moog, it's always been like ethereal kind of plucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um I'd say I'd probably go with a sub 37. It's just got, you know, you can say presets to all that kind of stuff. I mean, I need some power on the island, but uh yeah, you know, <laughs> and it's also like I 10 kilos so it wouldn't be the easiest thing to move around the proverbial island yeah <laughs> yeah the sub 37 is also moog right yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've looked into the sub 37 several times like i've been like i really want this but i've been moving around for years now so there hasn't really been a point but one day yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then the the mother the, there's no presets right it's like semi-modular it has a little patch bay for you to arrange things yeah it's got a patch bay and then if you want a preset you need to take a photo of it essentially which is uh what yeah it's what my google drive is full of because uh as i said i do know sound design and stuff but i am no uh you know i'm no sound design god 
Like I know it to a certain level, but I know if I went down the rabbit hole, I could spend years just learning how to do everything. Mm-hmm. But I don't really want to do that. But um, it's lots of times I do know how to do, you know, 90% of the basic and more advanced stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, but then I can't remember how to do it again. <laughs> so, so I just need to get a photo of it. Yeah. <laughs> so that is definitely the old school way of doing it. So do you make most of your stuff just with uh, the outboard since? How much do you rely on in-the-box plugins? I'd say 50-50, okay. or probably. Like, I'd say a lot of my leads are outboard. Um, most of my pads are plugins. Um, and then it kind of depends on what kind of track I'm trying to do. If it's something more like cyberpunk kind of stuff, I just go with, like, CRM or stuff because... Uh, you know, I've got all of my presets that I've made in the past on there. Just use them They're quick and easy. Yeah. Um, if I'm trying to make something more, you know, more developed, like I do when I do like the vocal tracks, that's when I'll start using all my outboard gear because I've got more control and I'd say it's got a better sound to it. Yeah, no, I noticed that. I was listening through your discography and I was like, these are these sound nice. And then that explains it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's uh the the classic approach. 